Okay, Mel, this is Mel. You've been a good friend for many years. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be only three inches apart rather than 3,000 miles 3, apart. 3,000 miles apart. <laughs> and Mel, you've been coming to Speaker Corner for years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, six or seven years and uh, stopped going back in 2017, but I'm glad to be back again here today. And you have never been on the ladder before. First time. Your very first, first time. time. Hundreds of times down here, but you've never been on the ladder. Oh, stayed in the background. Taking notes, and observing. Why have you never been on the ladder? Goodness knows, I, I uh, just never got around to. But now one of the chance. best minds I know. You've done some of the best research that I know. Thank you. And what has your research been on? It's been on a lot of topics, but the, the one that really stands out of late is on the question of Muhammad. Okay, Muhammad. So this is going to be controversial today. Yeah. And so we warn all of you. And if there are any Muslims listening, it looks like they're going and attacking that woman over there. They may come over here. If so, don't worry. You'll yeah. train them. So you're going to talk about Muhammad. But the word, even when you ask Muhammad, immediately I'm adding some vowels, or, or am, am I not? Absolutely. So if you look at the word, it's uh, mim ha mim uh, no. dal. And if you leave out the vowels, you can pronounce it in lots of different ways. You can pronounce it as Mac Mad, Mahmoud. Okay, hold on. We're kind of jumping ahead. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what he's talking about, in the seventh century there were no vowels in Arabic. There were just consonants. Mim ha mim dal, four letters. That's Absolutely. all that existed. Absolutely. So there was no Muhammad. No. No one named Muhammad at all. Yeah. Now you may have pronounced it that way. You could do so, but you would not write it that way. Exactly. Because the vowels were only created in the 8th and 9th century. And also, the dots that are needed to show what the letters are, those were created in the 8th and 9th century. Am I correct? Exactly. If you look at, that, at the various variations of the name Muhammad, for example, Mahmed in Turkey, you cannot get that name from Muhammad. It has to have come from a different word, a different uh, vocalization originally, such as Mahmed. And you can go from Mahmed to Mahmes in Turkish, but you can't go from Muhammad to Mahmed. Yeah, we're coming up with the truth here. He doesn't like what we're saying already. So I want to ask you, Mel, you cannot, because it's only four letters, it's obvious that these are very popular letters. Absolutely, yeah. And that these also go back many, many years. Absolutely. Because there have been many Muhammads, have there not? There have. So, if you ask most Muslims, Muhammad is the, the first and original Mahmud, but actually it goes back centuries. In fact, it goes back to 1400 years BC. 1400 BC is the first time we see these four letters. Exactly. And, and who was the one that actually created these four letters? So you find it not in Arabic, but you find it in Ugaritic, which is uh, it's actually associated with a city in Syria. So 1400 BC, and the word Mahmud had a particular meaning, which is the desired one. The desired one, okay. It took on other meanings, the blessed one, the yeah. anointed one. Exactly. So altogether lovely. Altogether lovely. It, it, it basically was, was taken in to the Hebrew and many other Semitic languages. And it became a, a concept in Judaism of the Messiah, the okay. anointed one. That happened first in, in Judaism, you're saying, yeah. or first in Christianity? It, it happened first in Judaism. So for example, if you go to a very familiar verse that Muslims love to use uh, trying to prove that Muhammad is prophesied, Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 16, you'll see Mahmudim, the altogether lovely. Altogether lovely, O the, daughters of Jerusalem. The problem is, it's got nothing to do with a prophecy, at least not an Islamic prophecy. It's, it's a prophecy that is entirely Jewish. It's prophesying. It. It's prophesying the Jewish Messiah. So it's talking about the Messiah that is yet to come. Exactly. And that is in the Song of Solomon that Muslims say is referring to Muhammad. Yeah. There's a big problem with that. In order for you to be a Mahmed, you must be Jewish. <laughs> you must be a descendant of David. I'm sorry, but Muhammad is not Jewish. He's not a descendant of David. 
So if he existed, which I doubt, that claim is bogus. So it's in Ugaritic, it's also in Hebrew. Exactly. They're the same root. They use yeah. the same consonants. Yeah. Now we get into the 4th century AD. Yeah. There's someone else now that takes this word, Mahmed. And that's uh, St. Ambrose. He looks at Song of Songs and he interprets it as being about the relationship between Christ the Messiah and his church. The anointed one the anointed. who is the Messiah and he applies it to Jesus Christ. Yeah. So that's the 4th century. The Christians were now using Muhammad as their Messiah. Exactly. The Jews were also using Muhammad as their Messiah. They're competing with each other. The Jews are saying we've got the Messiah or at least we hope to have the Messiah. He has not yet come. <laughs> The Christians say, no, 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 there's only one Messiah, we've got And he's him. coming back. And he's coming back. So the exactly. Jews are waiting for the Messiah to come the first time, yeah. where the Christians are saying he's going to come a second time. Exactly. And both cases, it is the Messiah, right? Exactly. But here's the thing. In Jewish thinking, there isn't one Messiah, there's two Messiahs. There's the Messiah being Joseph, who's a suffering servant. And then we have a Messiah being David, who is the conquering king. Of course, for Christians, that is one person, Jesus. Yeah. But here's the thing. We have an inscription from 523 AD in Najran, in Saudi Arabia. And it says Mahmed. The problem is, it's 100 years too early. That's right, Mahmed was never there. <laughs> Unless he never he, lived in Nutsuan, did he? Unless he was uh, 200 <laughs> years old in the 7th century. So there are many Mahmeds, are there not? Exactly. We so, have Mahmed after Mahmed after Mahmed that start to appear. We also have them on the coins, don't we? We do, but here's the problem. The Mahmeds you see on the coins, which start appearing in the 660s. 663. They all have crosses on them. Can you see a problem? Oh, did, let's, let's repeat that. So the coin, we'll show it right here. Here's the coin that we're looking at. There's a picture of Mu'awiyah on the front. He has a cross above his head. He has a cross in his hand, which means Mu'awiyah had to be a Christian. Exactly. And actually, we also have inscriptions connected with Mu'awiyah, and it begins with a cross. So it's clearly he's... So we're going to show it right here. Here's the inscription. There's the name Mu'awiyah. Interesting, it's in Greek. Yeah. And he says, Mu'awiyah, I am the leader of the believers. Yeah. So he is what believers that is in the inscription. Look at the cross right up Look to at the, the cross. upper left. Yeah, it, it's basically telling you as, as clearly as you can that so he's a Christian. So here's an inscription and here's a coin, both showing that the Muhammad that is there is a Christian. Exactly. Now, for Christians, the only Mahmud that could be that's on the coin is Jesus. The Jews in the early part of the 7th century thought that their Messiah had finally arrived. You have a guy called the Exilarch Nehemiah bin Huziel. He conquers Jerusalem in 614. He gets murdered. The Jews are obviously upset about this and they start writing, for example, the book of Zerubbabel referring to their exilarch, their murdered exilarch, as the Messiah. And they're waiting for another Messiah. His brother is called Shalom. That name should ring bells. He's also known as Salman al-Farsi. Salman al-Farsi. He is the next But in every exilarch. case, they use Muhammad as a title. Exactly. The praise one, the Messiah. So when they die, the next one takes that title. Exactly. When they die, the next one takes that title. How many are there? Five of them, right? There's at least five, but actually, there is a Chinese source that actually names about a dozen. A dozen. A dozen go stretching right into the eighth. So country. there's Mahmuds all over the seventh all over the shop. And are special. there any of these Mahmuds in Mecca and Medina? None. There's no water there. There's no water there. <laughs> There's no water, no food. No food, no people, no people, no towns, no towns, no cities, no cities, yeah. no civilization, no civilization, no history. The, the Mahmud of Islam is a complete phantom. He doesn't exist. There are no sources from the 7th century that can prove it. It's all a big mistake. The Mahmud on the coins is Jesus. The Mahmud on the Jewish inscriptions are 
the Jewish expectations of their own Messiah, who they think hasn't arrived yet. So when the Muslims finally come to power during the Abbasid period, we're talking about the mid 8th century, they then introduce a third Muhammad. Exactly. Third Muhammad. Exactly. We've actually got uh, direct evidence from uh, a Chinese source called Zhu Tang Shu, Shu and when the Tayaye, who's the, the main tribe in Iraq, they're the group that, that created this separatist state. They sent an envoy to China and they gave a story to the Chinese and the Chinese are surprised because the last time one of their envoys came to them, a hundred years before, they never mentioned anything about a Muhammad. Yeah. Now in 756 AD, suddenly we've got a Muhammad being introduced. Where did he come from? They wrote down both stories and now we can see both stories next to each other. It proves that the Abbasids invented their Muhammad. It is all a fabrication. So all the way through what we're seeing is Muhammad after Muhammad after Muhammad. These are nothing more than references to Jesus Christ. They're all in the north. They're in Damascus. They're in Jordan. They're over in Iraq. What is Iraq today? None of them are from Mecca Medina. So you can see, when the Muslims finally create their prophet, because they didn't have a prophetic line, they then put that, they said, we have the Muhammad. You guys don't have it, we have it. He is the seal of the prophet. He is the final prophet, and he needs a revelation. Now that's when the Quran starts to be put together. Isn't that amazing that it all comes together in the eighth century? It all fits together. We can't find any Qurans from the seventh century. They all begin to appear in the eighth and ninth century. Once they had a prophet, they then needed to have a revelation. You don't see any inscriptions to do with the Muhammad of Islam until the 730s. That's right. And, and then suddenly you have a Quran emerging and then all of the other stories, the Hadith start getting generated from then onwards. Okay. Now listen, thanks so much. This has been your first time on the ladder. You've done a great job. I think we've shut down Muhammad now. Absolutely.